okay mam start pannalam in the name of allah the most gracious and most merciful i welcome mrs atya banzal for the second day of the fdp program and all the participants for the second day uh, we were really overwhelmed by the number of viewers that we had till now it is 11221 thank you very much participants you really made it and i also thank uh, madam atya banzal for the very catchy uh, topic that she had opted for taking for these three days for the faculty development program thank you ma'am thank you very much oh over to mrs atya banzal <clears throat> okay assalam alaikum rahmatullahi wa barakatuh bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين اياك نعبد واياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين امين <تصفيق> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي سو دير اول السلام عليكم Good afternoon, Varnakam, and Namaskar. Hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Somebody show. Yeah. So here we are on the second day of twenty-first century teaching skills, and. today how we will go about i want to give you the outline first uh, we'll look at what is critical thinking and then uses of critical thinking <clears throat> we'll also look at how to teach critical thinking skills then we'll look at teaching social skills which is extremely important especially in 21st century what is metacognition and teaching metacognition so but before we go further let us have a little recap yesterday we looked at three tools one was this one three domains of learning that is psychomotor cognitive and affective we also looked at this pyramid six domains of bloom's taxonomy and we looked at higher order thinking skills we also covered 21st century skills and then we applied all that to into preparing learning tasks <clears throat> now my question is i gave you an acronym to remember all these six does anyone remember what was that acronym what was the acronym to remember all these six domains in bloom's taxonomy so that we can remember the higher order thinking skills when we are preparing learning tasks does anyone remember out of 11000 people somebody should tell me what what do you remember no answer Still no answer. No answer. No answer. Uh huh. We are just getting inside now. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll make up for it later. Yeah, let them settle down. Yeah, they are given a reply saying, "Are you a P A N E C?" That is fantastic. Grew up an egg. That is what I said. If we remember this one word, we don't need to, you know, think all the time. What you know, the top ones are higher order thinking skills, as we have seen yesterday. <clears throat> Any question about yesterday? If there is one, I can take it right now before we go further. any question there was one question 
about the concept of inclusive education. The concept of inclusive education will not hamper the learning ability of the gifted child. Will a child with AD, HAD will, uh, not suffer? Oh my God. You know, I would love to answer that question, but unfortunately I am not trained in special education. And that is something a special education trained teacher would answer better. So I would rather refrain from giving my half big thoughts there. Is that okay? Okay, ma'am. Yeah. <clears throat> so let us see. Today we look at tool number four, which is critical thinking. Now critical thinking actually comes from these higher order thinking skills. These are taken into, and what happens in critical thinking is we, let us first see why do we need it. And I'll go through these six points. Critical thinking is the ability to think clearly and rationally about what to do or what to believe. In simple words, critical thinking is our ability to make a clear, informed, and independent decision. Independent here means nobody should force you to accept this decision. You decide it as an individual that this is what I want to decide. Decision should be yours. And that decision should be made only after considering all available evidence. So critical thinking is actually a combination of higher order thinking skills. For example, analyzing, evaluating, and in between you see reasoning to solve problems and to make decisions. But only these three are not there, there are many more. Other cognitive skills like observing, interpreting, explaining, interfering, etc., are used in analyzing, reasoning, evaluating, problem solving, and decision making. So to make one decision, we need all kinds of thinking skills, higher order thinking skills. Critical thinking is the ability to objectively and honestly examine various pieces of information before making an important decision. So critical thinking is not about accumulating information. This is extremely important. Critical thinking is not about accumulating information. Now let us see at this one. For example, you want to make a decision and you analyzed everything, you thought about the reasons, you solved the problem, you evaluated your decision, you made a decision. But after making decision, if you look at it, you again evaluate and you find new information, you again go in the same cycle. This is why it is always put in circles. Like what decision you have made is fine, but when you evaluate your decision, you come across new information, you again go through the same cycle and make next decision. Okay. There is a question here. We'll take it later because it is not exactly connected with critical thinking. So we'll take it afterwards, inshallah. Example of critical thinking. This mother has two children, okay? A boy and a girl both suffered from serious kidney problems. So the doctor suggested kidney transplant. Now mother can donate one kidney to save one child. Whom should she try to save, son or daughter? Yeah, please type your answer so that we have some idea whom should she save. Because it is an important decision and we need critical thinking for that. So I would be happy if you give me some answer. Any answers coming? The mother has uh, given two kidneys to two children. She can give two kidneys to two children, she will die. 
Who will look after the children then? She can only give one. If she gives both, she will die. And children will have no mother. God knows what will they do. So make another decision. You made one decision. I gave you more information. Now you need to make another decision, okay? She will say who has got better chances of survival. Okay, that's a good answer. And another, oh, one. One, the, another one says she can donate to the child whose blood group matches her. That, that doctors must have checked. Otherwise, this dilemma won't arise. You know that it matches because she is the mother. So there's high chance it will match. Okay, but that's a very good answer. Who's chance? Who has high chances of? And other so ones I, are, is, uh, it, it, it should be given to the girl child. Uh, girl child. That was also I was looking for because critical thinking is looking at the photo. How can we decide such a life and death right. situation? For that, we really need critic critical thinking. Looking at the photo, honestly, we cannot decide. That is the bottom line. And this answer that uh, she should try to save the child who has better chances of survival. Yes, it makes sense. And she should be considering. But my idea was to bring it to your notice that uh, looking at the picture, we cannot decide. And that is what critical thinking is. Not to take a decision just by looking at the photo. Okay. Now we come. Yesterday I showed you this slide. 21st century skills. So we need critical thinking for this problem. I can carry on, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much. So we start where we were. We were talking about asking, um, making mistakes, yes. Make an atmosphere in your class, create an atmosphere where the students are not hesitant to, they don't feel bad about making mistakes because nobody, nobody learns without making mistakes. Organize frequent open discussions in the classroom, especially during language lessons. But as I said, you can do it in all subjects. Teach students how to disagree respectfully rather than shouting or picking up a fight. This is extremely important without this kind of respect for dissenting opinion, we cannot develop critical thinking. Critical thinking means, yeah, I, I don't agree with you, but that doesn't mean I'll impose my uh, decision on you. You have your right to have your decision according to the evidence available to you. I have a right to have a decision according to the, according to the evidence available to me. So disagreeing respectfully is extremely important here and encourage brainstorming. Brainstorming is a good idea. Every time you are doing something, you want to find solution or even when you ask them to write uh, essay or composition or any assignment, use opportunity to brainstorm. That is very useful for practicing creative, uh, critical thinking. Any question? 
No, ma'am. Okay. So we move to the next tool, that is critical reading. Now, critical reading is the process of applying critical thinking skills to reading text for comprehension. As I told you, you know, before, like uh, some of these history books or social uh, sciences books may have bias. It may be even literature. So critical reading skills involve carefully examining and evaluating a text for facts, looking for its intended aims and intentions, which are not clearly explicitly mentioned. That means we don't even only read the lines, but we also read between the line, what is not being said openly. This doesn't mean that all the texts have a bias, no. If there is no bias, then even then we read it critically so that we understand the unique perspective of the writer. Now, while reading a text critically, we understand the text at a much deeper level using elements of critical thinking and also inference logic and rhetoric. And here I have tried to find the three words for benefit of someone, because nowadays we hardly use this word rhetoric and logic, inference I can understand, anumanam, because it's the same in Hindi, we say anuman. Okay. Now critical reading skills are necessary to teach media literacy, especially in the times of false news, fake news, and WhatsApp forwards, everybody is forwarding, you know, forwarding, forwarding. So we need critical reading skills. Prepare students to live, uh, to prepare students to live and work in 21st century so that they learn to discover information, arguments and ideas in a text which are not explicit. And they should be able to evaluate and analyze the information, ideas, arguments for bias. So same thing because we are applying critical thinking. So in critical reading, our aim is same, to find hidden bias and hidden intentions, which are not very clear. If you look at this one, you this is what is happening, but the camera, TV camera is focused on this part. So what happens is the victim looks like the perpetrator and perpetrator looks like a victim. That is how media can change everything. If we don't have critical thinking, if we say, let us say, if I want to practice critical thinking, critical reading, when I look at this picture, I would like to say, before making a judgment, I would like to say the bigger picture. So I know what is happening. But if we don't practice, apply critical reading or critical thinking, we may accept this as truth, which is not truth. Now, what makes this cartoon actually appeared on March 26th in a very well respected newspaper, Hindu. And the cartoon was by Deepak Harichandran, who's again a well respected cartoonist. But when this cartoon appeared, many people objected. They said this is Islamophobic. So can anyone tell me why this cartoon is Islamophobic? What ob why people objected that this is Islamophobic cartoon? Why this cartoon is considered Islamophobic? No answers so far? No answers so far. No? No answers so far. Okay. Think, think. We are talking about critical thinking. Give me. We also talked about not being ashamed of making a mistake. Who doesn't make a mistake? Everybody does. 
They say attire or wearing a mask. <clears throat> wearing a mask. Or attire, A -T -T -I -R -E, attire. Attire, yeah, the clothes. Yeah. And that is the correct one. Clothes. And the, the dressing style. Yes. That is what. Because who wears this kind of dress in India? Who wears? Mostly Muslims. That is why it was immediately connected to Islamophobia. And moreover, this is wrong because coronavirus, Muslims didn't invent it. So why? And we'll go through just a minute. You uh, After a minute, we'll get into it. Why this kind of a thing was happening? Because lack of critical thinking makes people bigots, racist, Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, anti-women, anti-black, etc. And tomorrow we'll find a solution for it. What is the solution? To help people not become Islamophobic, anti-Semitic, anti-women, anti-black, etc. Not be a racist, basically. So here, because of the clothes, the person made it look like as if the Muslims are destroying the whole world, poor whole world is, the planet is wearing a mask and who are responsible these two? Actually, they look so much like Taliban and in India because Muslims wear so the Taliban connection connects to Muslims of India and it becomes very dangerous and see what happened. This was, remember the date, this was 26th March and this is 8th April, in between what happened in Delhi, this Tablighi Jamaat had an istima, a congregation in which lots of people came from abroad also. And the news media started saying that these Tablighi Jamaat people are spreading coronavirus. And here is the person who talked about it. Then another person talked about it, people of, very, of eminence who are talking about. And they started using a word, a phrase, single source contact. So first they used the word Tablighi Jamaat is spreading. Then it became Jamaatis are spreading. Then they said, okay, single source contact. So when they say single source contact, you go backwards and you know what do they mean. This is 8th April. Now see what happened on 13th April. 13th April, we'll go from here, down, up. This Bila Rajesh, who's Tamil Nadu Health Secretary, she was giving a briefing on uh, coronavirus situation in Tamil Nadu. So this agency has reported what Bila Rajesh has said. And this agency, you must know, it is Full form is Asian News International. And they have a huge business. Look at that. In 17 and 18, they had 68.23 crores. And it must have gone up, I'm sure, since then. Because data was not available for the 1920. And ANI feeds 90% of 99% of the news fake news or real news, that doesn't matter, to Reuters, which spreads that news across the world. Reuters is a very well-known old news company. And all this I got from Wikipedia, not from any hidden source. So that single source conduct. Here she says, 106 new positive cases reported in Tamil Nadu today, of which 90% are from single source conduct. Now this is not contact, this is conduct. Total number of positive cases rises to 1075 in the state of which 971 cases are from single source conduct. The whole phrase is repeated twice in such a small paragraph. It, is, it actually has only two sentences. So in every sentence they have repeated. Total 11 deaths till now, Bila Rajesh, Tamil Nadu Health Secretary said. Now, next day, what happened, Ms. Bila Rajesh, she objected. She said she has not mentioned any single source contact. She said contact. They reported conduct. So next day, they put a 
an apology. Not apology, I'm sorry, just a correction. And this is what they put, 160 po 106 positive cases today in which 16 have travel history and remaining 90 are their contacts, said Tamil Nadu Health Secretary Pila Rajesh. Then they say, note, reporter incorrectly quoted. They don't tell you which reporter. This is how they hide the news. If we don't have critical thinking, we'll again fall in their trap and accept it. Reporter incorrectly quoted Tamil Nadu Health Secretary, error is regretted. On April 12, Bila Rajesh did not mention single source contact. So she did not use this phrase, single source contact, but ANI wanted to put it in her mouth and they went from contact to conduct. When you say single source conduct, it actually makes no sense. But everybody remembers what they want to say. Instead of conduct, they want to say contact. And when you repeat conduct, conduct so time, twice in such a short paragraph, we remember whose conduct was bad. We were talking about Jamaat Islami. So that is how they create an atmosphere where people who are not using critical thinking fall for it. So the single source conduct, in fact, becomes a euphemism. Looks harmless, but it is not harmless. The phrase is not harmless. It is very harmful because immediately afterwards, people were killed because they had attended Tablighi Jamaat congregation and they were killed. They were blamed that they are spreading coronavirus. So having critical thinking in 21st century is really, really important. It's, it can be a matter of life and death. Researchers need critical reading skills to differentiate between facts and text, covertly written, secretly written for business purposes or propaganda. For example, I tell you Monsanto is a they make pesticides. It's a US company, they make pesticides. And they write, if you go to their website, you will see they are talking about, you know, green India. And it's not an Indian company, it's a US company. And bumper crop and all that. They don't say that they are writing it to make money from poor farmers. And that some of the pesticides are so harmful. In Kerala, if you see, in that area, Kasar God, where cashews are grown. Because of those pesticides, newborn children are having genetic diseases. It can be so harmful, but they are making money and they pretend they are doing it for the good of people, which is not. Not all reading texts contain bias, which as I have told you, then the even then we read it critically to find the writer's unique perspective. Social skills is, any question? Let's see before going to social skills. No, ma'am, only the lady who, to whom you had asked a question, she has given an answer that you can see later. Yeah, that, yeah, I'm, I'm keeping a track of them. So, we come to social skills. These are not difficult to teach. We all know we are all social beings. We are not antisocial elements. So how you can include that in your um, learning task? Like yesterday we had seen when the teacher is teaching about the fruit, she brings fruit and she's giving them social skills, etiquettes, how they can keep even if they are kindergarten students. Now here you see, The task is very simple. Shoot a five minute video to promote tourism in Kilakarai. Benefit to students is they can practice a lot of skills here, including social skills. So they can practice researching, which is academic or study skill. They'll practice shooting a video, how to shoot a video. They'll, shooting a video is a physical activity, IT skills. Editing a video, again, physical and IT skills. What time to shoot, they'll have to decide. So they'll have to 
get into evaluation, that is higher order thinking skills, asking friends to help with shooting, social skills. Are. Nobody can do it. She can make it a group project. Or even if one person is doing alone, even then they'll need social skills. Who will shoot? What time the person will shoot? Can everything be done only by one student or the student will need uh, support from outside because these are all tourist spots. There they'll have to practice social skills. Preparing a timetable, when to shoot what, they learn organizational skills, recording music and commentary for the video, they learn physical, uh, physical skills are involved, IT and artistic skills are involved, aesthetic is involved, checking video equipment for camera, again, physical skills, taking responsibility, editing and submitting video on time, physical organizational skills, making and packing lunch for shooting days. They will learn not only organizational skills, but also cooking skills. Otherwise, they'll be after their mom. Mom, you got to pack my lunch. No, it's a good time to teach them to make their own lunch. Because if we do not teach our children, the boys also need to look after themselves, do some cooking, they'll never learn. Even if they don't learn at home, at least as teachers, we must teach that boys cannot live all their lives hoping their wives and mothers to cook for them. Communication skills, being polite, persuasive, when they go in the public domain to shoot tourist spots, they have to practice all these skills, social skills. Social skills of cooperation, asking for information, negotiating, compromising, etc. And critical thinking, comparing, evaluating, making decisions, which part to put in the video because uh, for a five minute video, they may shoot for five hours or two hours. So which part to take, which part not to take, they will need critical thinking skills of comparing, evaluating, making decisions, etc. So no question. Okay, I'll wait just a few seconds. Let us see if there is a question. This is the easy one. And yes, we need a whole lot of it in if we are teaching stream or cross curricular tasks, we need a whole lot of it. Okay, so we come to metacognitive skills. Now here is a question, which rice bag you can pick up? I mean, different people have different ability, but tell me which one can you pick up? Put your answers here, please. Any answers? Different people no, will have different abilities. Just put what is your ability. Can you pick up a five kilogram bag, 15 kilogram bag, or 25 kilogram bag? Some say uh, five kg. Some Most, say 20, uh, so some say 25. Oh, very good. Some, some say 15. Okay, so different people have different ability. So that's oh. fine. Yeah, say it sister. Some say they can pick up all. Oh my God. Uh, one says it depends upon the family size. No, we are not talking about, see, we are talking about critical thinking, critical reading. So let us not deviate from the subject. Family size doesn't matter here. It, what we want is only your ability. You uh, another, another one says it depends on how much I can lift. Yeah, so we want to know how much can you lift? That is the question. How much can they, you lift? That is the question. So they just say 5, 15, 25, all? Okay. All, all, anybody who can pick up 25 kg can easily pick up 5 kg and 15 kg. But everybody who can pick up 5 kg may not be able to pick up 15 or 25 kg. That is the difference. So some can pick up. Now my question is, how do you know you can pick up? Another one says it depends upon your physical fitness. I'm not going into that physical fitness or family size. 
What I want to know, can you pick up? That's all. And here you see my question and your answer are not matching. And if we practice critical thinking, critical reading, we will find to fine tune our question and answer. And once we do that, we always get better marks. So how, how do you know you can pick up? It is only written on paper. Nobody has asked you to pick up and see. So how do you know? You can pick up this one and this one. How do you know? <laughs> All bags without rice. With rice only 5 kg. That's very good. How do you know you can pick it up? They say depending on your ability or depending on your experience. Ah, that's the word experience because you must have picked it up earlier. A past experience. Mm -hmm. We all know our ability somehow, as the answer says. From past experience, we know. This is metacognitive skill. Metacognitive skills are also known as metacognition. This is our ability to instinctively know what I can do and what I cannot do. I'll repeat again. Metacognitive skills or metacognition is our ability to instinctively know what we can do and what we cannot do. For example, you see this bird sitting here? Has very good metacognition. She knows she can sit Stand here. She'll not fall. So animals, everyone has metacognition. We know what we can do, what we cannot do. Now, how can teachers develop metacognitive skills in their students? Because as I said, normally what happens is the students do not learn what we ask them to learn, but they learn what they see. So rule number one is, if teacher has metacognitive skills, she'll somehow pass it on. For example, if she says, okay, can you do this task? Ask, the teacher asks the student, can you do this task? The student says, no. Teacher says, don't try, maybe you can. Now she is building that experience. So next time such a work comes, the student will have past experience to assess whether the student can do the task or not. And metacognitive skills are also called metacognitive strategies. And these are all higher order thinking skills that involve active control over the cognitive processes involved in learning. So metacognitive, like we say, you know, if you encourage someone, the person is ready to complete the task. But if we tell them, oh no, it's not good, we discourage, the person cannot. So metacognition, you know, it. It involves active control over other thinking processes. Metacognition helps a learner in deciding the best way to learn something new, to monitor how they are learning, and in evaluating the progress towards the completion of the task, and to know if they have completed the task or not. And don't worry about all these four, we'll soon see with an example. Metacognition is the learner's awareness of their own knowledge, if they have it or not, their ability to understand if they have understood or not, their ability to control and use their cognitive skills. These are the things which make certain students independent, autonomous learners. Others are dependent on teachers. These are the students, they know, yes, I can do this, I cannot do this. That means I have to go and learn this thing. Let us look at it from uh, with an example. So teaching metacognition using project-based tasks. Again, simple one, what we had talked about. Shoot a five-minute video to promote tourism in Kilakarai. Now, how many 21st century skills are involved in completing the task? We have just talked about it. We have talked about it. Now, how we can use this task to teach 
metacognitive skills. What can the teacher do is, she can give them deadlines. She can ask, she or he can ask, okay, you have this project to do? Now, definitely there are more than one tourist spot. So the students have to prepare a proposal, which one they want to shoot and when and all. So they prepare a proposal and give it to the teacher. Then teacher can have a look. Now, normally teachers, it's very boring for teachers to look at everybody's proposal, which had not been uh, seriously thought through. So what I do normally in the class, I ask them to present their proposal to the rest of the class, the whole group. And what happens is the, uh, when one group is presenting, the others give feedback. So whatever I want to say that this is a problem here, this is a problem here, and you can correct it. All those answers actually come from the students themselves. And this, the whole project becomes a higher order thinking skill project. So proposal day, they come to the college, you ask them to uh, present their proposal, ask others to give uh, feedback, so this proposal can be improved and then the students go and they make a file first draft and they submit it. See if 15 days time is there, two weeks, so they can write a first draft and submit it to the teacher and teacher can have a very quick look. If it feels good, okay, let them do it. And date of submission, 31st July. By giving these deadlines, Teacher has involved so much of metacognitive skills. How we can see it down here. And forgive me, it should not be three minutes. It was the five minutes, no? Now there are six stages in metacognition. Number one is planning and organizing. Here the students will make a list of all interesting historical, natural, and religious places in Kilakarai. Then they will decide which places a tourist will find interesting enough to visit. And they will Actually, divide project into subtasks and prepare a timetable to complete each subtask. Second stage is direct and manage your own learning. For this part, they think when they work well in what they so the student must think um, um. if they cannot, whom will they ask for help if they need? The students will learn to direct and manage their own learning. Monitor your own work. This is third part of metacognitive skills. The students will keep track of their timetable and check regularly if they are on time or getting late. So they are monitoring their own work. They will seek help if needed. They must think if they are putting their best effort or not. If they are not putting their best effort, they must put in their best effort, why they are not putting their best effort and what is the reason. Then the students should learn part of metacognitive skills to evaluate their own work. So after completing the task, the students should imagine they are the teacher and assess their own work. They must think if their method of assessment is correct or not. It is not that just because I like this, uh, I like my work, so it is the best work. No, you must assess it and see if your method of assessment is correct or not. Think if they are satisfied with their work or they would like to put in more effort in some parts. Then. Fifth part is reflect and assess your work that students must learn. So they'll think what helped them in completing their work well. Think if the strategies they used to complete that work were useful or not. Think if they would like to make any changes if they were asked to do a similar project again. Sixth part is modify your approach. So students must keep the work if they are satisfied think how they would improve the work if they are unsatisfied and they must very important submit work on time or before the deadline not after the deadline 
to do this, to teach them all this along with this, what you can do is we can add something towards the end of the project. The teacher should ask the students to reflect and assess their work and write a brief report, which will actually go for number five. And this is how they'll have to think about everything because they have done it. The students must think what helped. She can ask them, think what, you, what helped you in completing your work well. Think if the strategies you used to complete the work were useful. Think if you would like to make any changes if you were asked to do similar projects again. So she can ask them to write a report. But if you are normally, you know, writing a big report and reading a big report, both are um, tedious jobs. So many teachers find it useful to give a rubric like this. The teachers can ask the students to fill rubric about their experience of making the video. In group projects, ask each student to fill his or her reflection individually. It should not be a group. If there are five uh, students in one group, all five must put it separately. So you have name, class. I found this task difficult. Which one? Planning, writing, shooting. This task was easy for me. Which for task was easy? You can also add another column, others, or specify. I enjoyed. This will be the strength of the student, what they like to do, what they could do easily. I will improve. This will emphasize. The answer will be the weaknesses where they need to improve. In my next project, I will da 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 da. They can write down how they are going to improve their project. And this will give them, giving them deadline plus something to write at the end of the project. This will give them ample opportunity to practice metacognitive skills. So, to teach students in the 21st century and to teach 21st century skills, the teachers must, I'm concluding, stop giving answers and ask questions. Instead of giving answers, they can ask helpful questions to direct the students to the correct answer and make it an event of discovery. Because when you ask question and the student gives the answer and arrives at the correct answer, they feel they have discovered something new, which was in their mind, but they were not able to figure it out. Encourage peer critiquing. As I said, make an atmosphere in the classroom where uh, dissent or different difference in opinion is not taken adversely. Have debates and discussions during the teaching time. Give tasks where the students need to collaborate to complete the task. They learn so many social skills here. Encourage students and be part of the team and leader of the team. All those 21st century skills will come. Encourage students to teach frankly and honestly, even if it means challenging their own beliefs. There is no fun speaking which is not your thought. And become facilitator, facilitators of knowledge, not deliverers of content. This is my advice to teachers. Please do not become deliverers of content. Be facilitators of knowledge. So this is it from me. Any question? Accept that question. We'll take that separately here. Yeah. Uh, that is one, that's one question a person has asked. What is the best for my child? And yeah, best for your child. You know, sister, brother. How do I know? You remember? We talked about this one. Yeah. Looking at the photo, we cannot decide. So similarly, you know, how can I decide what is best? Being the parent, you are the best person to decide for your child. Trust yourself.
What is as, oh, there's one more question. Mm -hmm. What is rubric? Oh, rubric, you know, when you put things like this. But I'm so happy you asked. That is really important to ask. And no question is stupid. Answers can be stupid. Questions are never stupid. When you put it like this here, they just put tick, tick, tick. That is a rubric. Here I wanted them to write longer sentences, so I left it open. If you want, you can also put it. The rubric is this thing. Any more? Any more? No, just waiting. You can go with the answer for the, that question. You just wait okay. For that. So you can monitor. So, but let me not. Okay, let me. Hidden curriculum is unintended. Correct. Yeah. Now, my point is there. This is Supraja Narsimhan system. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, my point is that things which people want to keep hidden, they are usually not good things. Why would you hide something? Especially when we are talking about teaching and learning. So if, you, if we want to teach, why will we not put... If it is a good thing, why will we not put it in the curriculum? Why will we try to hide it so the learner doesn't know? The hidden curriculum is usually negative. What you can do is if you give me an example of positive, what you have found, because if you use critical thinking, you will see that it is usually hidden curriculum is negative. Yeah, but I would say, I would expect Sister Supraja Narsimhan to respond to my answer so that And there is one more question. Yes. Could you explain the reason for having the photos of three books? Photos of? Three books. That I have shown in my slide. Yeah, they are asking what is the reason for having it. Three books which I had shown, I think. That is what yeah. they mean. Okay, I'll tell you. That's a good question. That's a good question. Okay, share the screen. Let me find out where they are. Here. Thank you so much for reminding me, which I forgot to. You know. Yeah. Now, these three books, about history books I talked, you know, there can be some bias. As I told you, Indian history is, now Indian historians are writing our own history, but after 1947, much of Indian history that we read, written by Indian historians, was based on British historians who wrote from British point of view, not Indian point of view. So world history, that's what I'm saying. This book, Clash of Civilization by Samuel P. Huntington, it is very, very popular book. Uh -huh. I don't know, and now maybe it has died down the popularity. But this is all Islamophobia, filled with Islamophobia. Because Samuel P. Huntington, he is a supporter of Israel. And he wants to dispossess Palestinians 
So he wrote this book, blaming entire Muslims, all Muslims, that they are going to take over the world, just like those jamaat e islami we talked about. And this book by Edward Said, Orientalism, it came in 1970s sometime. Edward Said was a professor, and this book actually analyzes that these European colonizers like British, French, Dutch, even Germans and Italians, they all came, went to other countries and colonized it. And they tried to study those people. Like British came to India and they tried to, they have written so many books about India, but they are not based on reality. That is their hidden agenda was to promote their colonial rule so that colonized people will not stand in revolt against them. That's why I put, because it goes with the critical reading stuff. Any more? And uh, Supraja, she has uh, said, agreed, ma'am. But on those days, in, within brackets, she has given gender bias. Illustrations were given on masculine form. Like Ravi visited this village, Ram helped people and so on. But in present text space, what are the illustrations? Oh, sister, this is something I tell you. Like when I write a task, I am very careful not to give all the masculine tasks to boys and all the feminine tasks to women. So, for example, if I'm writing a story, my inspector will be a woman. There'll be people of position. And because I really, really believe in equality of gender. To my son also, I taught how to cook, how to clean the bathroom. And I put it in my task also. If I'm asking a student, I'm writing a story for comprehension, I'll make sure that I do not portray those uh, masculine characteristics which are actually very dangerous. And if those days certain girls what is wrong in it? This is biological phenomenon. Nobody should be ashamed of it. You know, if somebody is menstruating, you are menstruating. It's like breathing, it comes on its own. Next question is from uh, Mr. Abdul Rahim. He say, he's asking, how can we train the students for e-learning? Oh, e-learning, it's a huge thing. Actually, what has happened is like here in Hong Kong, we had made some efforts already to give work on internet using Google Classroom. And many schools had actually signed up for Zoom also before they paid for it. Now with this thing, in places like India and small schools and colleges, suddenly teachers have to change from teaching face-to-face -to, -face to online teaching. I mean, it's hard for teachers. What I can teach in classroom face-to-face, -face, preparing the same material for online teaching, I need one or two days to put the things together. So how do we prepare the students? First thing is, by giving them small tasks, e-learning. It is not good to ask students to sit in front of a screen for four hours, five hours, six hours. Like even here, my screen is big that I use. But if you use only this small screen, it will destroy poor kids' eyes. So e-learning is useful. And you remember yesterday we talked about flipped classroom. It's very useful there. You can give them tasks, you go, understand about this topic and come back tomorrow in the class we discuss and we'll take the learning to a higher level. 
we'll have a debate, we'll have a discussion, we'll have a problem to solve. And one more question. Is meta mm -hmm. metacognitive differ, differ, different from gender to gender? No, we all know what we can do, what we cannot do. This is a different issue that mostly girls are not so muscular. So the girl will say, no, I can't pick up 15 kilogram rice bag. But meta, see, metacognition is about thinking. It's a skill of the brain. And God has given enough brain to both uh, genders. It's not about muscles. It's about knowing what I can do, what I cannot do. Another one is topics like uh, topics like human trafficking could not be given for critical thinking because even now some boys and girls find difficulty express. What can Top. we do as a teacher? Okay, topics like I couldn't pick up that word. Topics human traffic. Human trafficking. Human traffic. You know, one thing I believe in total honesty. Why we cannot talk? Why we cannot talk about menstruation in the class? Why we cannot talk about human trafficking? Because the world out there is full of all this. The school is the place where we prepare our students, the school and colleges, to so that they can operate in the world, real world, without falling into the traps. So human trafficking, we must talk, we must talk. Even if it is prostitution, let us talk. Honesty is the best policy. Like gender bias, if we don't talk, like sister said in her question, you know, like they show women doing, it will be an illustration in a textbook. Woman is shown doing housework. Man is shown reading a newspaper. And to me, this is completely, I, I, it makes me angry. Why you show only father reading the newspaper and mom doing housework? Why can't father do the housework and mom read the newspaper? So go by honesty, brother. It may you may feel embarrassed if in the in your community or your school people are not so open. But believe me, first couple of times you'll feel hesitant. Otherwise, if we don't talk about this problem, how will we solve it? We cannot sweep the problem under the carpet. We have to talk about it, solve it. Yes, ma'am, that's all the questions. Mm -hmm. uh, you can go for the word of thanks. and graceful good afternoon to all. All is well, that ends well. My most sincere thanks My most sincere thanks to our almighty God who shower his blessing to make this program a successful one. I would like to express my thanks to our management personalities uh, who, who are, my, I would like to express my gratitude to our management personalities, our president, Dr. S.K. Syed Ahmad, then engineer uh, S.K. Kuda Muhammad, O.K. Jafar, um, who uh, guide and motivate us in all the positive aspects. My delighted gratitude to our principal, Dr. K. Rajat Fatima, who give her concern and provide a lot of support in the team of arrangements. I would like to uh, 
uttered some words about Dr. Abdul Kalam. Dr. Abdul Kalam said that teaching is a noble profession that shapes the uh, character, caliber, and future of an individual. I think these words are uh, very odd for our speaker because uh, this is the right time to uh, tell my wholehearted gratitude to our speaker, Atiyah Bansal, writer, teacher, teacher trainer, director of Aleph Academy, CEO of Aleph Complementary Educational Service Limited, Hong Kong for being and sparing your valuable time with us, ma'am. Ma'am, your gentle word and thought-provoking speech is really a source of encouragement for all of us. Uh. Really, it's fantastic, ma'am. Thank you very much. Uh. Then I would like to express my uh, uh, thanks to all the participants who have actively participated in this uh, uh, program. Then I would like to extend my thanks uh, to all the HODs, teaching and non-teaching staff and uh, um, our uh, organizing committee who support us in all aspects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shall we end, ma'am? Um, yes, she's on. Uh, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Inshallah, we'll meet tomorrow. Inshallah, inshallah. Until then, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Warakam and good afternoon. Take care.